Nurse Joy is probably the most underrated Pokemon character, mostly because in every Pokemon game, your interactions only last a couple of seconds. In Pokemon, you have this miraculous machine that heals all wounds, restoring your entire party in a matter of seconds. But what did Nurse Joy do before these machines existed? This is the last Nurse Joy, where you play as Ida, a Nurse Joy stationed in an Arctic research base where you must use your medical knowledge, tools, and instincts to diagnose and cure Pokemon. This is our journey as a Nurse Joy. Before we get into the story, let's take a look back on our first day as a Nurse Joy. Ida had just gotten off the boat with her best friend and assistant, Chansey, when tragedy struck. A skiddy was rushed into the Pokemon Center after a heavy object had been dropped on her tail. It was a serious injury, and if nobody did anything, we could expect the worst. So we rushed Skitty into the operating room. Well, obviously first things first, we had to pet them. Okay, okay, my bad, my bad, my bad. Luckily, after administering some painkillers, we were free to pet the Skitty as we will. Chansey, I promise this is the most important part of the medical process. Although we were worried about the Skitty's tail. The wound had broken skin, and more than that, Skitty wouldn't stop licking it. But the most worrying thing was that no matter how much I poked it, and I poked it a lot, Skitty didn't feel a thing. We decided to x-ray the poor thing, and it was clear the bone wasn't just broken, it was shattered. Between a chart of Skitty's vital organs and a medical book passage, it was clear what we had to do. Veterinarians will choose to amputate tails that won't heal correctly due to nerve damage? Are we gonna have to amputate Skitty's tail? We issued our treatment, a cone to keep it from licking its wound, gauze to wrap and protect it from the elements, and in order to stay in the Pokemon Center. The best we could provide Skitty was a toy for comfort, which they cautiously took. Chansey and I knew what we had to do. This was our job, even if we didn't like it. And at least this way, Skitty had a chance. 20 years later, and we've just received some news. In four days, we would be receiving a new Pokemon Center machine. All of a sudden, all of our expertise wouldn't be needed. All these Pokemon would be cured with the press of a button. At the very least, we had a tailless Delcaddy to keep us company, still holding our favorite toy after two decades. But Chansey, just cause we're out of a job in four days doesn't mean we don't have work to do now. This Pikachu has been randomly discharging electricity and even fried his owner's laptop. And in a research facility with a lot of important electronics, that could be extremely dangerous. His owner took his laptop and a handful of tissues to repair it and left us to do our job. The first thing we had to do was, of course, try and pet Pikachu, which we paid the price for. But after equipping some rubber gloves, we were free to pet as we pleased. Okay, now let's get serious. Take their vitals. Temperature was 40 degrees Celsius, which is... Uh, hi, I just I just googled it and that's over a hundred degrees Fahrenheit. That's very high Nothing showed up on their x-rays or vitals So I began to suspect this wasn't anything serious after some quick reading It seems electric types exhibit electricity in response to a fever and after using a tool to measure electricity output It seemed that that was correct This means that this was either the common cold or the flu if only we could examine the color of the snot then we could oh Okay, it's the flu. That means the treatment is easy. Apply a cool pack, give it lots of water. We gave it some vitamin C tablets as well and ordered it to stay in bed. Should be simple enough. That was a nice long day of work. One of the last you and I will have here, Chansey. At least our Vesta is warming our bed. Now we can relax for a nice long night of... Okay, what was that noise? Our best friend Scarlet seems to have a Zwellius that's acting awfully hypothermic. Chansey, you know, you're my real best friend. My, my, I mean, Scarlet's like my human best friend. So let's just treat Zwellius. We did what we could. We put a warm blanket on them, gave them a heat pack, pet both heads, as of course you have to do, and... <sighs> I'm not gonna lie. I boofed this one. I messed up bad, y'all. I did a blood test and found that it had very low iron, and for dragon types that could simulate hypothermic effects. And when I meant to tell the owner, I fat fingered the button and told them, Oh, did you know its temperature is low? Duh, it's hypothermic. This immediately ended the day and we failed our third mission. So if you want to actually see what happens to Zwellius and do a better job saving it than I did, please try out the game yourself. The download link is in the description. <laughs> and maybe subscribe while you're there. Chansey, maybe I'm really not cut out for this job. I'd be lying if I said I was confident. This new machine has me feeling all sorts of... Wait, that's an SOS signal on the radio. We ran outside to see what was going on where we found a sick Empoleon. 
but to our surprise, it attacked us before running off. That's when one of the scientists, Dr. Garcia, arrived. Turns out that the Empoleon was his friend, except it wasn't an Empoleon at all. This was a ditto, and it had gone rogue. Lock the doors, people. Ditto could be any Pokemon in this facility. We would have to sniff them out. Thing style. We first found it impersonating an Espeon in Dr. Garcia's own room, but after a quick hypnosis, it gave us the slip. Next, it was in the lounge impersonating either Delcaddy, Pikachu, or Zuelius. But that was its biggest mistake. Using my massive Giga Brain, I knew that we had treated all of these Pokemon before and had expertly deduced that Zuelius was actually Ditto in disguise. Its first mistake was going up against me, Moopsin, the greatest Pokemon. Well, crap baskets. At least we redeemed ourselves by picking Ditto out of a pack of Arcanines. Glad we had this body temperature detector and oh my god, that was the scariest Cherim jump scare I've ever seen, which I never expected to say. But hold on, did Ditto just turn into a human? This meant only one thing. We gathered all the scientists at the labs. One of them was an imposter. We had our partner Chansey stand ready to attack while we took statements, checking the memories of all the scientists. What did we diagnose Pikachu with? How did Delcaddy lose her tail 20 years ago? We had to keep them talking until someone slipped up. Dr. Garcia, you said right as Ditto broke into the facility that you ran back to your room to check for them. But if you remember, that was when Ditto had impersonated an Espeon. And would you look at that? Another Dr. Garcia just walked through the door. Chansey, do your worst. This was our most productive day in a while. We prevented a massive disaster and it had nothing to do with sick Pokemon. It's kind of bittersweet in its own way, isn't it, Chansey? And like that, we went to bed. Tomorrow would be our last day as a nurse droid before we became a glorified button pusher. Wait, why are we in space? Wait, are we becoming a star? Why are all the stars dying? What the hell was that? We talked about our strange dream in the lounge, only for the oldest doctor, Cassandra Will, to apologize. It seems like her gothitelle was giving everyone in the facility the same dream. It was up to us to play therapist and diagnose why. So, Chansey and I began diagnosing our very last patient. You know the drill. We have to pet the... Oh, oh, no? Oh, well, th that's fine too, I guess. Some delicate reading told us that Psychic-type Pokemon were prone to anxiety and depression, and woohoo, now I know what Pokemon type I am. But in all seriousness, there's no antidepressants in the Pokemon Center, so it's time to play therapist. Oh, you don't want to talk? You'd rather just show us a vision? That's cool too, I guess. Gothitel showed us a vision. The drugs in a first aid kit left on the ground led to Zwellius going feral and attacking Dr. Cassandra. We immediately rushed to the locker room to treat the injured, but... We couldn't find anyone. We collected the first aid kit, and then returned to the Pokemon Center, confused. Only for Gothitelle to show us another vision. We'd seemingly averted the tragedy that would be happening tomorrow. We had changed the future. But why show us? Why not the people involved? Was there something coming that only we could stop? But instead of answering our questions, Gothitelle showed us a new vision. Another future. We're trying to fix a broken heat lamp. Dr. Cassandra, Will, and a Roserade become injured. When we ran to go fix the defective heat lamp, we realized what Gothitelle was having us do. She had seen some event in the future, some great disaster, and she needed our help to stop it from happening. She was testing us. And that's when Gothitelle showed us the final vision. We were back in Unova. A mother sits on her chair while her child plays across the room. And upstairs, Dr. Cassandra Will lay dead in her bed, passing away peacefully in her sleep. This was the future Gothitelle saw. This wasn't a psychic Pokemon showing us the future to save the world. There was no great disaster. This was just a Pokemon not wanting their trainer to leave them alone. She wanted us to prevent this. She knew we were a nurse, but against old age, what could we do? We told Gothitelle that this was beyond our abilities. But you're a nurse. You're a doctor, she told us, using force to try and make us do something that was impossible. But with tears in her eyes, we had to tell her the truth. 
that sometimes we just lose people. And maybe instead of taking this time to try and stop the inevitable, she should be spending it with her trainer, her mother, while they still were here. Gothitel set us down. We knew what we had to do and brought us back to our time, ending the vision. We told Cassandra about what Gothitel had saw so that they can spend their remaining time with their loved ones. They understood and had been accepting that their time was near for quite a while. And now they had the opportunity to explain it to Gothitel. A somber note to end our career. Because the next day, we woke up knowing that ours and Chansey's lives were changing forever. We unloaded the machine from the ship and set it up. We loved our job as a nurse, but this machine would save more lives than we ever could. And that was it. I could make peace with that. Maybe even move on. Ch Chansey, no! Chansey had dove into the machine in an attempt to destroy it. The advanced technology had mutated them in the explosion. Our partner. Our friend. Chansey had become this monstrosity. Skin too tough to pierce with a needle. No mouth to feed it medicine. And they had lost control of their mind. What more could we do for our friend? Well, we had one idea. The healing powers of the machine had transformed Chansey, almost as if it was mega evolution, according to the research scientists. And there's only one way to forcibly revert a mega evolution, with force. We began to gather a team of Pokemon from around the base. Delcaddy and Pikachu agreed to come with, an Arcanine from the dog pen we found Ditto in, Roserade from the greenhouse, Gothitelle, do you want to come? Mother of fuck, what in the name of fuck is that fucking thing? Oh, okay. No is fine, too. It was time to put an end to this. Delcaddy managed to put the Mega Chansey to sleep, while Rosary got off a leech life and Arcanine finished the deed with a Flare Blitz. We had won the battle and Chansey regained consciousness, but their form still didn't revert. This wasn't an issue of Chansey not being able to. Chansey didn't want to. Chansey wanted to destroy the machine. Chansey knew what our job meant to us. They loved working alongside us. And that's when we noticed a huge gaping wound on Chansey's chest. If they reverted now, they could bleed out. So it was time to do our job. It was the same things we had always done. Inject them with painkillers, clean and dress the wound, wrap it with gauze. The same motions we had gone through hundreds of times before. But it still wasn't enough. If Chansey untransformed now, they would still be in danger. Our only option was to use the machine, which Chansey didn't take kindly to. So we had to have a heart to heart. Just because our medical knowledge isn't needed anymore doesn't mean we won't have a use. A machine can't give a Skitty a toy that they'll love 20 years later. A machine can't catch a Ditto running rampant in our research base. And a machine can't give closure to a Pokemon trainer and their Gothitel when the end is near. People will still need us. We'll still have a purpose and we'll still be satisfied. But we won't unless you're there by our side, Chansey. We need you. So with a heavy heart and some convincing, Chansey went back into their Pokeball and we put them into the machine. We don't know where our life is gonna take us from here on out, but we are and will continue to be a Nurse Joy. On the topic of healthcare, this video is brought to you by the American Heart Association. They're an organization that remains the number one provider of CPR training and certification in the United States and aim to combat heart disease, which remains the number one killer worldwide. So if you'd like to support them and their awesome mission, there should be donation links in both the description at the side of this YouTube video. I hope you look into it because, hey, the best way to combat this disease is to learn more about it. Have a nice rest of y'all's day.